I used to work in my dad's pharmacy a lot. I need to prepare breakfast. And I accumulated, like I started my own newsletter for Heal from the ground up, and I accumulated a lot of subscribers from people who are his customers. And I something I shared on social media recently, being really vulnerable about my childhood trauma. Um, I want to share it in my newsletter, but I actually don't want to because I know a lot of subscribers are, you know, know him, and I don't want like his image to be tarnished or to, for him to be misunderstood. Him and my mother. So like I feel reluctant, even though I know it'd be very helpful. It'd be a very yeah, so I plan to share it in my newsletter, but I'll skim through my newsletter subscribers and just try to kind of remove anybody that I know is the kind of no that is a part of the pharmacy or it's a pharmacy customer. So. Me and you free. Hi everyone, welcome to Rob's Kitchen. Super luxurious Airbnb in the city center of Prague, where we're staying the last two nights. Uh, we're very lucky to stay for the last two nights before we moving to Taiwan. And right now, I'm doing something I haven't done in ages. I think since I was a child, I'm just taking a bath in this luxurious, luxurious bath yeah, of was. the uh, tower, the TV tower, and of Prague, from the bathtub, from the luxury of this jacuzzi. Yeah, it's amazing. And there's a beautiful view all around. Okay, it's not safe. It's good, yeah. Get off, please. Hanging slowly, but surely turning into a couch potato. Are you a couch potato, Jenny? But I think Michael turned something off for the night so we don't have like extra electric things going on because he doesn't like having that overnight and now we don't really know how to turn on the TV. So, not really a couch potato. Sort of a couch potato, right, Jenny? <laughs> so, let me give you guys a tour here of the place. Or, more like, I mean, the place itself is beautiful, but it's the view that. It's Jenny. <laughs> hey, hey there, couch potato! Hmm. Careful, Zenny, okay? If you get off the couch, you have to be careful. So, yeah, I'll just show you guys the view here. So this is the like living room. Let me check up here. Thing. Are you okay? How did you get off the couch? Are you okay? Hmm? All limbs still intact? Okay. Then you really like so uh, I mean I don't know, I guess old children, I don't know, I don't have experience with many children. Really likes the like buttons and things with buttons. This is the kitchen. Today is the 22nd of October, 2020, and we're officially on. I almost like have like a, I'm afraid now to check check news because um, they just announced random regulations, like ran more and more restrictions, just literally overnight. Um, so yesterday, I checked the news and. And there you go. I guess I must be psychic because I was afraid and and they're like, yeah, beginning tomorrow there's a lockdown. So today is the lockdown. Day one. Um, and what that means is that they closed um, everything except for... Hey there, Jenny mm. Hey there. You want to say hi? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, they closed down um, everything, like all closed down or severely restricted. Um, all stores except for grocery stores, drug stores, pharmacies. So I'm listing you the things that are still open. Grocery stores, uh, like drug stores, mean like like drogery, like that kind of store. Thank you. 
pharmacies, um, government offices are only open at most two days a week, at most five hours per, in those two days a week. Um, they've closed like all like clothing store, all like other stores. Uh, you're not allowed to go outside unless you're going to get groceries or you're going to the pharmacy or like some bare essentials or you're going to visit family or 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 to the park like to the nature other than that he has some crazy issues with sleep like he just doesn't sleep at night um which wasn't impacting me like this has been like since i know him past whatever um like six years um it, it didn't really affect me we just don't sleep in the same bed because he cannot sleep like with another person um he's very scared about uh waking up and then um and i know kind of where it's coming from because like his mom didn't even take care of him at night when he was a baby because she was afraid to sleep next to him so his dad had to take care of him as a baby so some major trauma um but at this point like it's kind of like having an effect on my family like i lived with his parents obviously as you guys know, like we lived in, his, in their house and I have just observed this thing where his mom, like she will sleep during the day. Like it's a little bit creepy almost because like, I don't know, like I guess she goes to bed super late and then when I wake up, like she's just, she, her bed is, bedroom is still closed, the door, like his dad, he just goes to work early in the morning. He wakes up 5 a.m., whatever, 6 a.m., goes to work. Um, and his mom, she will be still in her bedroom sleeping. The bedroom door is closed, the blinds are shut into like, almost like at an afternoon, I don't know, noon, whatever, 11 a.m. for sure. Um, it's some crazy thing like that his mom has with sleep where she goes to bed super late or doesn't sleep during the night. By the way, yeah, I'm looking at my hands now. So they're super dry. I need lotion. It's crazy. It looks scary. It's scarier than it is though. They're just like dry. That's what happens to me when it's cold. But anyway, um, like like his his mom, she just like, I don't know, doesn't sleep, goes to bed late, whatever. Like that's what I observed. But I, the weird thing is that literally during the day, she is in her bedroom sleeping. And it's strange, but she's an elderly lady, you know, she's over 70. So with her, I'm like, okay, like it's whatever. But like my husband now does it and it just super triggered me. Because um, in the morning, I've gone into this or sort of I'm starting to get into this like routine whatever we're like but I'm scared like I don't want to get into this routine it's just that like the father of the family which is Michael like right now it is 10 what is it 10 40 so 10 minutes ago at 10 30 until 10 30 because then he wakes up at like whatever like 7 30 whatever 7 8 and um Michael is like sleeping um and so I take care of Zenyi. He, he was kind of awake. Michael was kind of awake, actually. Like he was, she was recording me drinking the jacuzzi bath. But then he goes to bed to sleep because he said like I didn't sleep at night. I didn't sleep the whole night. And so he goes to bed. And I feel bad for him. I don't want my husband to be sick or die or something. And that's his fear. He's gonna die. He doesn't get enough sleep. And I don't want him to be sick. And I know I, I need to be understanding towards him because I have my own issues. And he's been so understanding and loving towards me when I was going and taking care of Zen when I was completely decomposing, as you guys know. Like. Um, but at the same time, like, this is really weird, like, for our family that, like, the father, just like his mom, you know, just like Zen's grandma, right, my mother-in-law, that the father just, like, is in the bedroom with the do door shut until 10.30. Another thing that's coming up for me is I know my mom, she, like, uh, the, the reason I got so triggered, because I literally just came into his room, 10.30 a.m., I got triggered that he's, like, sleeping so late, because it, it's, like, a pattern where he doesn't sleep during the day, during the night, and then, like, he start, like he sleeps, like, during the day, you know? And it's just weird for our family, I feel like. I don't know. I mean, I guess, like, what is weird? Like, it's okay to be weird, but I don't know. I got triggered also because, like, my mom, she hated it when I would sleep in. She would be like, you're not gonna sleep. Like, you, why are you sleeping so late? My mom would always wake me up, like, at 9 a.m. Like, 10 a.m. is already, like, late or whatever. So I'm also bringing my mom's kind of, like, weird attitude into this. It's both, you know? Um, like, my mom's this, like, um, you're sleeping late? Why? You're lazy or you should get up and do the stuff or whatever, you know? Which is also not good, obviously, at all, you know? But also just, like, it's a little kind of creepy it's weird to say creepy because i know it comes from pain and trauma and my husband used to work through this you know and this comes from his mother and stuff but like can i say something but there you go but like like is it that's not like i don't know like but i'm telling him like get up and i could go to jay's room and something i did i should not have done that in the session away because i was unloving but i went into his room and I like I'm like get up I open the blinds finally because he has to like put all the blinds down otherwise he can't sleep or 10 30 a.m. I go into his room I'm like get up Michael and then he doesn't want to get up he's supposed to sleep so I'm like I took off his blankets literally then I took off his pillow and I got like 
Like, I was just, I mean, I didn't, like, yell or anything, but I was angry. And then now he just got up. But he did, otherwise, he would have slept till, I don't know, till how late. But, like, that can't be normal. So I told him, you have to get help. Like, you have to get, I don't know, sleep help or trauma help, whatever. He, he did start getting help with, uh, with my, uh, like, oh, no, she's not my, but, like, I, I just, I guess, like, I, I found her. That's, like, like psychic, um, psychic, uh, intuitive counselor, um, you know, Magda. Okay, can you sleep, 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 coach? I don't know. I mean, because like his mom, like she, okay. when he was I a was one month old baby, his mom would not sleep next to him. It was his dad taking care. She did not take night. care of her not at night. Of him. She did not take care of him at night. So my husband is in a lot of pain. It's a lot of trauma. Not but I'm also worried now because it's like trauma is like putting onto our family or whatever. Because it's like, like our son grows up with a father who's like, who like is like sick. Like literally, it's almost like the father is dying until 10, 30, 11 a.m. Yeah. Like he needs Father's some sort of help. From Packing all the yeah, luggage. He packs all the luggage yeah, he packs all the luggage. Search the internet. In that the middle true. of the night, I have to pack. In the morning, I have to pack. You don't pack. Yeah, that's true. I was do, well, like, I'm I was free riding because it's also I, easy I, to I, get Michael to do stuff. I was like, I'm just gonna free ride. He just packed all the luggage. I mean, I was doing stuff though. I was taking care of like Zen's documents when he used to care. And you were searching like the internet, saying like, oh my god, they're having all this lockdown measures. Please share, please share your experience. I'm, I will, I'm listening. I just obviously saying, oh, don't like, I, okay, okay. I need to get dressed. So. Here, but. I have been experience? sleeping just, better. I have been sleeping better like the last two nights because I tried something different. Like, Daria really forced me, pushed me to be vulnerable. And I, I published it, a post on social media which was really releasing to be that raw and vulnerable. And I, I would have this issue. I'd wake up in the middle of the night and not be able to go back to sleep. I fear I'm not going to be able to go back to sleep because I would go to the restroom and come back and I would have that fear immediate and I normally wouldn't go back to sleep and the last uh, other than last night the uh, two nights before that I was able to go back to sleep because I think sharing that full share and being vulnerable and co connecting with my childhood trauma acknowledging it really helped me I had a session last night with you know our intuitive coach and she's a very she's a big she's a very she's a straight shooter and she's more on the you know logical side um but she's a straight shooter and the session before that we had a couple session and i felt like i was being reprimanded but it's just it, that's not her intention at all but that's just the way sometimes the way she communicates is out of love but she's a straight shooter and so like i brought that feeling into yes today's session uh, I mean, yes, last night's session, and she was kind of, I feel, I felt like displeased because I was like five minutes late since we saw Daria's parents and we we're rushing back home. And I think this, 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 uh, this anger, like I grew up with a father with, ex like, with a lot of anger issues and he was very emotionally suppressed. He would... He'd be emotionless so fast and he'd forward be a few hours later, I don't know, maybe two hours later or whatever. And right now, again, we had a fight, me and Michael. So then he's actually sleeping, he's feeding and sleeping right now, oh, sweetheart. And so what happened is we actually have a few friends uh, stopping by um, before we go to Taiwan. Um, just to say bye and, you know, I prepared a few treats for them here and some drinks and the problem is that Michael is I cannot read your writing Michael so this, I cannot read my, ooh, Michael left me some note here but oh, I, yeah. I can't read it but what I want to say is that uh, we were supposed to go out now and get lunch before you know to go obviously supposedly the restaurant Michael says the restaurants are still open for to go um, and then I was like, okay, we're gonna be late when the friends arrive, so I'm gonna prepare everything. I'm gonna prepare the drinks out as well for them. And um, we got into a fight because Michael, he always feels like not heard because his parents made him feel not heard, not validated. So that's why yesterday he was getting counseling with Magda, the, our uh, you know intuitive uh, me psychic medium or counselor. And after the session, he felt like what she was saying, she was so straightforward and she doesn't feel hurt. He doesn't feel like he can tell her how he really feels and she, he doesn't feel hurt about his trauma. And so same thing now, like I, I told him, Michael. You just told I, me specifically, 
you are, I am the host and you are the hostess. Back the fuck off. When I asked these drinks, people are coming in an hour and a half or two hours. We can keep, not, instead of leaving them out, put them in the fridge so they stay cold. And I wasn't out of pain. Your response was out of pain. And I admitted today, you said, oh, I, the little devil within me came out when I see other people economically suffering. I was like, oh, wow, that's my core pain. I put it on, and I, and I, and I, and I admitted to that. But this, nothing. You are putting pain onto me, and you said it right. In the face of anger or strong energy, I need to practice still on my voice. It doesn't mean that I cower, and I'm not saying out of pain that, I, oh, I'm voicing my feelings out of pain. No, I'm honoring my feelings, and I was not a Hulk in any way. I was not out of pain or anger. I just voiced my desire, and you said, you are, I, you are, I am the host and you are the hostess, back the fuck off and I'm not going with you anywhere because I need a counseling session. And that, I, own, I admit to everything that I, you know, whatever I'm wrong, I admit to it. But this, you are putting pain onto your family. So what is happening? Don't don't give the keys. Just you, you tell me like by phone when you're back. So pretty much what is happening right now because Michael has been so severely traumatized by his parents his whole life and uh, in childhood when he was not really hurt, you know his feelings just didn't matter. You know what mattered was consoling his mom. So he lives with, he lives with this tremendous pain and trauma of um, not being heard. You know of having to constantly shut up. Like he's always much quieter, you know, I'm always like a loud mouth and he's always much quieter and just kind of not always serving other people and not really serving himself and that is just a tremendous and heartbreaking pain that he lives with. But what I'm telling him is that you need to get counseling because what's happening is the pain is very much valid and um, and it needs to be healed for his own well-being and for the well-being of our family but he needs to start getting regular counseling sessions and he did start getting counseling like yesterday he had counseling and he's been having some more counseling uh with um you know with that um you know uh with the uh intuitive counselor uh over the past couple of weeks so he's doing great and i support him but it needs to be more of a i would say regular thing and because he just he has so much pain that's been coming up like you know guys like how for me like so much pain has been coming up since then was born like i was always in pain you know but back in spring and summer i was not able to function like you know if you look at my videos i was not able to function for my family michael had to do the very loving thing of just taking care of like everything he would cook back in summer you know we were already in czech republic like he would cook and he would and take care of Zengi and I would do these videos because I just have to cry and be by myself and you know and it was just you know and then I kind of slowly started to feel a bit more like a bit better a bit better like that you know and with um you know with Michael now like this pain has been coming up from his childhood not 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 being acknowledged at all by his parents as the child that needs protection from his mother's severe trauma and panic attacks um, and you know the child should not have to be woken up that's child abuse I would say or borders and that like waking up your child your 10 year old child your 10 year old son every night or whatever on a regular basis every week I don't know but it would keep happening um, and be like not just crying into the pillow but the way he described is like his mother she would be having these terror attacks and he would be forced like to sit by her side and comfort her and come her down in the middle of the night as a 10 year old and i was like what was your dad doing and his dad he was just like whatever in another room or sitting nearby just letting this happen so his dad did not even like if the mother is having such if the mother has war trauma, communism trauma, you know, she witnessed as a child some crazy stuff where like a train exploded as they were escaping from communism, from communists, and so people, or, or like a bridge exploded, and they were they were just like running for commun communism. His grandma, he, the mother's mother, went through war, uh, or yeah, and like her her family was shot in front of her eyes by the I believe by the Japanese Nazis, by communists or Japanese Nazis, and so um. There's so much pain and trauma, so I understand where Michael's mom is coming from and that she has such unhealed trauma and pain. 
but obviously you know if she did have these panic attacks the father's responsibility was you know at the very least to take the son the 10 year old son first of all to protect him and let him sleep at night but if okay if the mother really like burst into the room on a regular basis then to take the son aside and to to explain to him your, your mother has severe trauma but i am here i'm with you but no his dad was allowing the mother or they would both i don't know wake up michael to make michael console like no, his mother who was in terror you know in in her own bed you know having these panic attacks you know for a 10 year old like that's as the father just looks by you know not able to do anything supposedly and so michael was completely invalidated in his needs as a child as you know and he's only now really becoming conscious of the fact that because it's always been about my trauma and my pain with my family my parents and but um he's he's has always been silent and you know it's coming out and you know just like my trauma you know coming out like it was so difficult for our family for michael for our son you know same thing now with michael's like it because it comes out in bursts you know it's like so raw